Hey everyone, I hope you're all having a great day today. I wanted to do a video on macro design documents for game jams as in my behind the scenes video, I showed off my macro design document and people really liked that concept for a game jam, that one page small document. I also wanted to uh, give everyone a resource. So I developed this little example, this little template that you can all use and fill in for future game jams if you like this method of planning. So the major concept here, and I wrote an about section below, is that it's a template that you can add detail to. So a macro design document works really well in a game jam under three pages. I would recommend two maximum actually, but um, you, you really want to focus on the important core features of the game. And the major point is for yourself and the team is to dive into the prototype with a plan. So even though it's a very small plan, if you can all agree on what's written in here, you can all work to a, the same goal. And even if you're working by yourself, I find it a great way to organize your final thoughts. So when you're in a game jam, you might be brainstorming different ideas, and then you can condense it into a really nice one page document. So in terms of the structure, we start with the game summary. And this is an explanation of what the game is about. As you can see, I've written here, you play as a guardian of time. While you're asleep, your enemies dismantle the crystal of time. So first of all, we know there's a character that we play as, so this is a third person game. Uh, dismantle the crystal of time. This is one of the things that is important in the game and the world. It's up to you to gather the shards and put time back together. So the shards will be some form of collectible in the game. And now you can think that there's actually a bit of story in this world. This little sentence gives the world a bit of life and it really helps in the development of the art assets, music and all that. Next, we have the core mechanics. As you can see here, I've written list on the points below, the dot points below, what core features are in your game. So in this game, it was really important that we focused on the 30 second levels for the game jam, that you die in one hit, movement, the 10 shards, entering the portal, and that enemies charge at you. So we get a sense of what the enemies do, how you get between levels, if there are different levels, uh, how do you get to that level, you have to collect the 10 shards, what the character does, um, how they die, and the seconds in the level. And if you are thinking about a different type of game, you can probably guess these. So. Uh, example 1, grab a hook for exploration and combat. Example 2, time only moves when the player moves. And example 3, player can save and recharge Estus at bonfires. That one's pretty um, simple. Uh, maybe you leave a comment to guess this one. This is really simple. If you've watched my channel, you know exactly what this is. Uh, I hope everyone knows what this is because it's from a great game. And you should be able to get this one. It's not too bad, but let me know if you can guess all three of these. The next thing is the gameplay. So I like to personally give an example of a gameplay scenario and how it would play out. I find that it is really useful in uh, getting in everyone's minds what the game is about, getting a visual image and allowing them to imagine the gameplay. And I find that is actually inspiring for people. So in my example, I've written that the player is in a small arena level, so people uh, hopefully can interpret that if they've played similar games with arena type levels, a very small level, and they can run around and as time goes down the level is falling apart, so hopefully they're imagining the outer layer of the arena falling bit by bit until it hits the center and that falls apart. Uh, when you kill an enemy, time rewinds, rebuilding the stage, so hopefully they can imagine those blocks coming back. And then the player has to balance a few things. First of all, not dying. And the way they do this is by defeating enemies to get time back, uh, keeping the stage alive and collecting the shards. So hopefully by reading this, you can get a sense of, okay, the game is about these things and these are the things that you're doing. This is the kind of level it's in and you're imagining the gameplay. Next up, you have the music and I believe uh, writing how the music will be used, what feeling you want to get from the player, and what is the major influence with the music. So how the music will be used is, in my example here, really important because the music will change um, if time is above or under 15 seconds. In some games, music may not be as important, but in this game it is. Uh, this will, and the reason why, which is also very important, this will add to the player feeling pressured or relaxed during the game. So that's my reason, and that's how I want the player to feel. If you remember I wrote here, uh, how will the player feel? Well, 
either pressured or relaxed depending on how they're performing in the game. And lastly, the music inspirations. So that way uh, you can discuss with the person doing your music what you want it to be inspired by. And you'd probably both work on this part together anyway. The last section when I'm doing a game jam is the art style. I personally find the art to be very important. And here I like to write the art style we'll be using. So uh, if you see here, a low poly art style and reference images uh, with the game names in case someone wants to research them. I should write them there. And as you can see here, we've got that isometric view and I write Diablo 3 because most people have seen that it's a more wide known game so people can really imagine what that would look like. And then I can write, it's a mix of the Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker and low poly art style and they can imagine uh, Wind Waker isometric with a more flat shaded look and then some reference images and I find the reference images are super important. In the music section, it wouldn't hurt to add some links to the music. Uh, that would really be useful. And even in gameplay, if you can add a link to what the gameplay may potentially look like, that's pretty useful. But it may not be possible if you have more experimental gameplay. As you can see here, we have some more standard gameplay features. And I actually forgot one really important feature here, which was that the level can rebuild upon rewind and falls apart over time. So, this is how I like to structure my uh, macro design documents for game jams. These are the sections that I like to use, and of course, they change from game to game, and I always get better at writing these game jam to game jam. I personally keep them one page. Two pages should be perfectly fine. I think any more than two pages, and you might be over planning your game jam game. Remember, this is only to give you a bit of a plan before you jump into the game jam. So for Think about this as giving you a plan so you can as quickly as possible jump into your prototype and it gives you a direction during your prototype. During the prototype, you should be experimenting and building upon all these features. You should be trying things in different ways. This is not a gospel. This is not something you just stick to. Uh, be agile with this. You're allowed to change it up. You don't have to stick to what's written here. It's just an initial plan. Not everything will go according to plan. You cannot it's pretty damn impossible for a game to not change over the course of prototyping as you'll find better features whilst prototyping and the game will just evolve. I hope you all found this video useful. I will do a video sometime soon on the production of a macro design document, a five page macro design document for a, a bigger indie game that you're working on maybe for six months or a year. So if you're interested in that, let me know. And I will hopefully get a video out on the Source Tree thing people wanted to see of using Unreal Engine 4 and Source Tree. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.